Hi, everybody. So today's piece is this one, which is a, a drawing, or I guess it's a drawing with acrylic painting on it, uh, with ink, ink and acrylic. And um, so there's a pretty long story that goes with this. Um, this was a piece that I did for the Dia de los Muertos, the first Dia de los Muertos celebration in um, Kingston, or the first that I know of anyway, um, that I helped to um, put on with uh, Yessi Rivera Belsham and um, Kelsey Jensen and a few, a lot of other people, <laughs> tons of other people in, at the TED Center in 2015. So um, it was, uh, or in 2015, I, I can't remember if it was 2015 or 16. I think it was November 1st, 2015. And then we continued afterward. Um, but anyway, the reason that I I happened to see um, an ad that said that they needed uh, volunteers to help, and I think the ad was probably placed by Yessi or Vera Belsham, who is a, an amazing Mexican um, artist in Kingston, and um, she's got a lot of energy and she drums and she's part of the drum circle very special person and she is an artist and she uh this was all her brainchild so i was just on board for um, being a volunteer but i ended up doing a lot of sponsorship for them for us and um i stuck it through to the whole um, through the whole festival, which was great. And I did this um, piece, which was, um, as you can see, there's a skeleton here, and there's my ancestress, and um, there are, this is an old, like a, a, maybe my ancestress's house, and my ancestress's flowers, and this um, ground that's like morphing and changing around through time. And these are the same person. My ancestress here who's alive and my ancestress here who is dead. And so I was thinking of many ancestresses uh, for this, probably grandmothers and great aunts most especially. Anyway, um, so the festival was amazing. So <laughs> I um, had really, well, as soon as I heard about this festival, my imagination went crazy. And I was picturing things that, um, that I would have, you know, would have been probably possible maybe um, after a few years of establishing the festival, but I was picturing a, lot, a huge parade of um, like a flower float parade with flower, you know, sculptures. And I was picturing like all of the flower stores participating in the festival and um, like flower art. And that actually happened because Michelle Stenson of Chartreuse Flowers, who is a flower artist, she did a lot of work for this festival and it turned out so well. And um, we didn't have a parade and I would have liked to maybe have an outdoor thing at a graveyard or something also, but I don't think, like it, the, for the first year it was kind of, whatever we could do, we did. I contacted as, contacted as many artists as we could get, and um, I contacted all the flower stores with my wild ideas. And um, like, 
it, it was really fun to to do this festival and I met a lot of artists that I wouldn't have met otherwise um, and so also on board was um, Peggy Fussell who's um, a really great artist who was in the TED Center at the time um, Patricia Van Asperen she was also in in the um, TED Center at the time so I got to meet her and um, I met Jenny Fewer, who is an amazing, talented um, collector and uh, amazing space maker who um, helped us a lot uh, in, at the day. Like the day of the thing, we had um, a silent auction with many, many tables filled with things that were donated and um, Jenny Fewer set up the tables and she had these beautiful um, items from Mexico because she made a lot of trips to Mexico and she she had authentic um, altar pieces and she really did a beautiful job um, creating a lot of authenticity uh, in the space and she, as I said she's just a beautiful space maker I've never seen anyone with such a magical touch in these spaces you know and able to just make everything look so beautiful so she's very talented and um, and an excellent eye for collecting um, excellent taste she's just a, a powerhouse in that sense we had face painting and the silent auction went really well and the numbers of people who came out were astounding and in fact we probably needed a much larger venue because um, it was um, you know and since then there have been other Dia de los Muertos that I haven't been completely involved in and um, and so I only know really the story of the first one, but I know Yessi uh, Rivera Belsham put a lot of money up front to make this festival happen the first time, and um, so it was just sort of miraculous the response that w was that came out of it, and it was just a, an amazing time. And I was really glad to be able to do this little piece for them. Uh, for the what it was was the if you lost somebody, or you had a picture of someone who lost you lost during the year, people would bring those to the um, to this sort of um, tribute space, and um, so there was a lot of that. And so I just made something of my ancestral series that meant something to me and I brought it brought it and a lot of other artists I know Rob Watson he brought some things and it was just a great day it was beautiful and um, what I was picturing was that Kingston would you know maybe this is not I mean this couldn't have been done the first year but I was picturing Kingston with um, you know, all of the windows in Kingston decorated for Dia de los Muertos and um, celebrating our uh, Mexican and Spanish descended artists and um, just like a beautiful tribute with the flower shops and, and a parade and a float, maybe not a parade that interrupts traffic, but a, a parade maybe like a like a, a parade to um, like a graveyard or something like that I mean the graveyard I think is a very good idea because they're so beautiful and there are lots of nice graveyards in Kingston really beautiful graveyards and it's also a time to reflect on the past um, like if you hang around in graveyards a little bit um, like I do a bit, you know, not as much as I would like, but, you know, enough. I 
I spent some time in graveyards. They're amazing. You know, they make you think of the past. They make you think of colonialism. They make you think of people hard, hard scrabbling in this crazy, uh, wintry land. And, you know, there's just so much to be gained from uh, thinking about death, you know and celebrating it sort of in the way that that they do down in Mexico. And um, so just a beautiful thing that happened at the Tet Center. And that is the theme of this uh, video. So this is the first piece that I'm sort of showing. And uh, maybe someday We'll have, I don't know, maybe we could start growing flower sculptures now, like take some stuff, put it together into a big shape, plant it, and maybe every year effortlessly they will grow into flowers and we won't have to do much, maybe just water them a bit, and maybe we could put them in parks. And then we could have a, or in graveyards, we could start growing them today. I mean, it's like a chia pet, right? Even if it was badly grown, even if it was overgrown, that would be more interesting, I think. Native flowers, and that would be so beautiful. Anyway, just some thoughts. And vegetation holds things together, you know. But anyway, uh, so the second part of this is also a Tet Center item because I did this item while I was um, while I was at the Tet Center at a workshop thrown by. Uh, Okay, so the Tet Center is down on King Street. It's a beautiful facility. It has a potter's studio in it. It has a lapidary place in it. It has the modern fuel gallery. It has, um, it's right next door to the Isabel Theater Auditorium, which is a world-class auditorium in Kingston. And um, uh, there's a little cafe in the Tet Center. So it's a beautiful place to visit. And they also have studios, artist studios. And I've been to like um, Halloween dances there. They have a pretty nice big, a couple of big, big open rooms with fireplaces. One of which was where we did the De, De Los Muertos. Um, but anyway, uh, beautiful rooms. And um, so it's an excellent facility, and I think the artists, uh, when they sign their contract, they have to, there's a certain amount you pay to be um, in the studio, and then you have to throw these workshops. So this is a workshop that was thrown by my friend, um, Barb Danieluski, and my friend, Brock uh, Clow. And so two really amazing, remarkable artists. Barb Danieluski is a mastermind. I can't think of anything that she couldn't improve. Like she's just so smart and she's got so many ties in the city and so much um, social capital. Like she's just a, a really smart, beautiful person with so many ideas. And um, so she was there. She's a screen printer and um, and a bell maker for bicycle bells. And uh, Brock is one of the most remarkable artists I've ever seen. Like his line is so beautiful. Like his line drawings are uh, astounding. And they were sharing a studio together. And so this workshop was held by the two of them. And um, it was so nice to, and Patricia Van Aspern was there. 
and her art is like it's plaster or the the stuff that she was doing anyway at the time I don't know what she's up to now but it probably more of the same but what it was was beautiful plaster um, pieces mixed with fabric and string and everything was a very natural color clay so it was all this kind of um, natural sun bleached white ivory bone color like all these white colors put together white shades of off-white and cream and ivory all put together and it was just beautiful sculptures she's incredible so it's good that her studio was open at the time and um, so I got to see some of her things but anyway uh, getting back to um, this piece I think what I was still thinking about at the time was the Dia de los Muertos and the spirit of I don't know like you don't need a lot of like maybe what I was thinking was to write a poem about flowers that was big enough to say what I really wanted to see in Kingston for the Dia de los Muertos festival and so what I was seeing here and maybe just the spirit of it is enough because Maybe you could never translate such a thing. Um, but anyway, as you can see here, there's a sky and there's this dome and there are flowers and there's a triffid flower in the middle and it's flanked by a row, maybe a never ending um, infinite row of single roses hanging in space and, and like the spirits of people gathering around and their hopes and this feeling of anticipation and flower, like abundance and wealth and flowers just pouring over the city and this sort of height of flowers and like transformational uh, feeling of, you know, kind of rising of flowers through the city like you know stories and stories I mean it's impractical but I'm just talking you know about what what's exciting here <laughs> so anyway that's what I was feeling and and the studios were so great and Barb brought all of this great paper which I will show you at some other point in another video because the paper that she gifted me with is so beautiful and from old books and and um so anyway it was a beautiful workshop and I was swimming with these ideas and um so um we were all sitting together and I wanted to show you Brock made a piece we were all talking and with each other and Brock made this uh, piece of this woman, woman. and um, she he put a uh, free goddess at the bottom and I like to think he was drawing me <laughs> because he gave it to me and he didn't ask for anything in return and he was drawing it as I was bubbling on about probably something I'm not sure but anyway this is it was so energizing for me to get this and I did the sort of burbling things in the background and so it's a collaboration piece here you should check out his drawings like they're amazing Brock is the kind of person who you know how John Cocteau would say the line has to be alive? That's how I feel about Brock. Like just the most living line. So beautiful. 
I feel like, and John Cocteau did the inside of a church in France, in his homeland, like that you can just go and sit in. I feel like there's an opportunity. If you want, like, I know that there are, what I'd like to see in Kingston is more spaces where you can one day a week or maybe a couple of days a week or maybe every day you can sit in that place and like it would be a place you wouldn't have to spend money you know what I mean like a reading room I know there are libraries maybe there should be Places within buildings where you can just go and sit and not have to spend any money. Maybe little book rooms or something. But anyway, if there was such a thing, like instead of maybe, or like a chapel, but it would be like a secular chapel. And actually, I, now that I think of it, didn't Cocteau do a mural or just paint the inside of a marriage license bureau in France? I think he actually did. But anyway, uh, so you would have this space. You wouldn't have to pay any money to get in. It's moderately warm. You can sit in there. And it's like a kind of like a temple or a chapel or a, a sacred space except that and it would be like uh, the inside would be designed totally by an artist and i feel like you wouldn't want the artist to be punished for agreeing to do this you know what i mean so you wouldn't want michelangelo and the sistine chapel was flogged on the back, you know, a million assistants, wax dripping on his face, doing such a good job. But really, what you'd want is a free line, a free line through the whole thing. The artist could do pretty easily, wouldn't take that much time. And I think, for my money, Brock Cloud would be a great artist to do that sort of thing. So beautiful. Anyway, his line is just amazing. Go and check out his drawings. They are amazing. One of the best artists in Houston. Of course, I've been talking about all the best artists in Houston. No, I have. <laughs> there are so many. But I've been talking about a lot of great artists. People that I really like. Uh, oh, and Kelsey Jensen. She designed the poster for Dia de los Muertos. I forgot to say that. Finger painting. Oh, here's another thing. Um, like if you had a space, what would be cool is to have like shaker meetings. Because shaker meetings are silent. Like people just sit around and they sit in silence in shaker meetings. Like the, the Shakers, their whole thing was sitting in silence and just witnessing something, which I guess you can do in concerts too. There's a lot of silence, silence in concert. There are a lot of silences in concerts. Maybe you could sit in silence after a concert. But I feel like there's an opportunity for a Shaker convention of sitting in silence in an art space. Like having a shaker meeting. Maybe you could have your own shaker meeting where you're sitting in silence. Maybe there should be like spaces also for really hilarious art. And maybe like erotic art or something. Anyway, I guess there's everything is a possibility. Um, so, oh, and I also wanted to show you. Okay. 
So during this workshop, the beautiful hostess of the workshop is my friend, Gardini Whiskey, and I wanted to show you a of this. Okay. So this tie is something she gave me. And I know she sells things at Minotaur. She sells things at all kinds of spaces, places. And she made this. Like, she has themes. Lots of social justice themes. She has um, things about cars and the environment. And this happens to be a mushroom. I believe it's a Salasabi cubensis or um, uh, what's the other name for it? Salasabi cubensis. I can't remember what the other name for it is, but it's a magic mushroom, I think. <laughs> kind of like think back to Alice in Wonderland. Hmm. So anyway, that was a long time ago. The Tent Center is still fantastic and still has artists in it. Uh, it still has the lapidary. Everything is exactly the same as I described. And they deserve to have wonderful warm parties and dance parties in there, I think. So hopefully we can do that. And soon this will explode into a celebration of beautiful flowers rising up stories high and free spaces where people can contemplate in silence and be there without spending money. Or maybe they and they can you know, single line going all the way through and us celebrating the dead and in graveyards the way it's meant to be and thinking about history. Maybe we can have history celebrations where people write historical essays and present them in graveyards on November 1st. That's a great idea. And then we'll have a dance party. Maybe not in the graveyard, but wouldn't that be great if we did? But anyway, I hope that you're having a wonderful time. I hope that everything is going well for you and that you're feeling good and keeping well. And I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, and you wish to see more videos, um, a further videos in my art tour house tour art series, then please subscribe to my channel. And particularly if you're related to me, you know, if you're my family, you're my cousin, my uncle, my mother's cousin, my father's cousin, my brother, <laughs> my sister, you're and my aunt, if you are somebody that I love, you should subscribe to this channel because I'm probably going to do a video that involves some artifact from your life, from your life and people from your life because I'm, I have an interest in doing so and I love you. And um, anyway, you don't have to, but I think it's a good idea. I have a lot of words. But anyway, thank you so much. And I hope that you have a wonderful day. And I will see you in the next video. Okay.